Hello everybody, welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. I did my research, and it's just a quality of life thing where uh, it skips any text you have already seen, which would should be seen text, and then this stops it at choices, I think. Are you sure? I just felt like, well, as vice president and all, that I should really help you get started on something you might like. Gary reaches into a bag and pulls out a book. I don't want you to feel left out, so I picked the book I might enjoy. A short read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you want. This is a uh, book. Uh, thank you, Yuri. I definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. You can read at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Not everyone is settled in. I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face has already been buried in the book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she's waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki's rummaging around in the closet. I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. You looking for something in there? Hey, this is different. Fucking Amika! <laughs> she never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga? You read manga, right? Ah, sometimes. Manga is one of those things you can't admit you're really into and until you figure out where the other person stands. How did you know, anyways? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What is this supposed to mean? I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst the stacks of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pulled it out of the stack. There it is! That's what he snatches it out of my hand, and she turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know the that feel. I get closer to at the box set she's admiring. Parfit girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic, or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging or anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Ranzik. Consider this a lesson. Don't judge our fucking book! In fact... Natsuki pulls the first volume of Perfect Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Ah. I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly... Mo. Don't just stand there. Uh, you, Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. <laughs> then she takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsill. She pats on the ground next to her, singling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Eh, why is that? Uh, I guess it would be easier to close together like this. Oh, uh, don't say that. It would make me feel weird about it. Natsuki crosses her arms and scoots an inch away from me. Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting uh, this close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while well, she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has this been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back to the beginning and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh, I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. Looks like it's a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life effect. I kinda grew out of these. Since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not. Oh my god, she's cute. Oh my god, she's cute! Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Hmm? Hmm? You don't. Um, that's not... 
Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it? Oh, <laughs> no! She's a closet weeb! No! Jeez. Uh, sorry. <laughs> like I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up without them being all like, Eh? You still haven't grown out of that yet? It makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh, I know some of those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are into it. Hey, guys! You like anime, right? 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 <clears throat> I'm already kind of a loser. I guess I gravitated toward the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? <laughs> I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. My dad would beat the shit out of me if he found this. <laughs> what? What? At least it's safe here in the club room. So Monica's kind of a jerk about it. Uh, I can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? Wait. Yeah. So? Ah. Jeez, that's enough. Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flip through the page. Time passes. Natsuki is strangely quiet now. I glance over her. She looks like she's starting to fall asleep. Oh my goodness. Hey, Natsuki. Yeah? Suddenly Natsuki collapses straight into me. Hey! Um... <laughs> At least I learned how to hide the text. Oh, jeez. Natsuki, are you okay? Huh? Here. Monica reaches in her bag and pulls out some kind of protein bar. She throws it in Natsuki's direction. Natsuki's eyes suddenly light up again. She snatches the bar from the floor and immediately tears off the wrapper. I told you not to give me... She doesn't even finish her sentence before stuffing it in her mouth. Don't worry, Ranzik. She's fine. It just happens every now and then. That's why I always keep a snack in the bag for her. Yeah! You start transcending this plane of reality if you start getting hungry. So here! Have a Snickers! Anyway, why don't we all share poems now? Alright. It's obvious, very obvious, Monica's up to something. Or is the cause of something. Is she a god? Like a goddess? In which case, why would she be the protagonist? Hmm. Natsuki. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair I shared mine with her first. Natsuki? Hmm? Okay, well, uh, let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um... Natsuki rereads my poems. It, never mind, I don't think I like uh, giving you my opinion. Eh, what's the point of sharing it in the first place? I wrote this when we could have been doing other things. In fact, I remember how I said I wanted to read your poems. That's what I had in mind when writing this. I wanted you to help feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Uh, well, it would be more comfortable to share my poems if yours was really bad. You were supposed to show me some dumb poem and make me go, Ha! Well, it's not that great, but let me show what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. I hope you're happy. So, in other words, you're saying you liked it. Yeah. Natsuki, Natsuki's retort gets caught in her throat. You're so... You just, you just don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that you don't have to go announcing it to the world that you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never actually said that. I said that mostly to myself. 
Natsuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she likes my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Grr, fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, scorpions can leave, horse can race, owls can seek, cheese can run, eagles can fly, people can... Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, I told you they weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So I'm taking my writing seriously. But is the poem poems for uh, people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. It, I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everything around you do, and you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring up the feeling in the last time. So you did. I guess it more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect it from the youngs youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided you were her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Hmm. I need to know something. Monica, come! Hi, Ranzik. Having a good time so far? Ah, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, have you have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better? I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring this up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring them up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ah. Uh -huh. Don't worry, Ranzik. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But that's the sort of area we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm -hmm. I like it, Ranzik. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me something not to give her right, and she's a good writer too, so I'll take that as a compliment. Aha. Uh -huh. If you say so, yep. If you're interested in Natsuki, then always keep a snack on you. She'll cling to you like a puppy. Ah. Uh -huh. Natsuki's dad doesn't give her lunch money or leave her any food in the house, so she's supposed in a fussy mood pretty often. What? But sometimes she just loses all her strength and shuts down. Like earlier. I guess this is a guess, but... She's so small because her malnutrition is interfering with her adolescent growth. Oh my god. Also, I'm understanding why these are all different. It's because... I chose the poem that's leading to the girl, so the game registers that as, I'm choosing this girl. Ah! I'm getting it now. It's a shame it's like my second playthrough, actually. Wait, second? Her malnutrition is interfering with her adolescent growth. But hey, some guys are into petite girls, you know? Sorry, just trying to look at the bright side. Well, that makes me feel a little better... Uh, knowing she's, uh, older and dirtier than she looks, but... That's horrible! Feed the girl! Anyway, do we want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always have to feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in the wall? But he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frankly glanced at my surroundings. But my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrawling playing tricks on my ears? The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my free... Um, swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. So what do you think? Hmm, it's very... freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right past person to ask for feedbacks. Ah, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between the words and lines. When performing out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure how, if I know how to put it, but I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly, but maybe after everyone is better, friends with each other. Anyway... Here's my cause writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain is too fixated on a specific point. 
If you try so hard to make it perfect, you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot too long, you'll just leave a dark, big dark puddle of ink. So you just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my life for today. Thanks for listening. And Yuri. Uh, mm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes. More than enough time for a finished reading. Um, oh, sorry. Got to start speaking. Um, it's fine if you don't force yourself. I'm not... I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that might be after reading through it. Ah, so it's that bad. No! It's just... Did I raise my voice? I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we haven't even gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I really didn't notice. So what were you saying? Right, um, it's just that there are specific writing happenings that aren't typical, usual, typical of new writers. I've never been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. The most notable thing I recognize in the new writers is that they try to make their styles very deliberate. In other words, they try to pick a writing style separated from the talk of the matter and form fit to the two together. The end result is that the both styles and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor has totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes down, it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing for to herself or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Yes, please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles from if it's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, this, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghosts under the light, tendrils of my hair illuminate every pillow. Oh, this must be this one. She light with a mist of the times. Place the dead. Yeah, light figure. The yeah, it's the same thing! I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah! Okay! I'm glad this is why I wanted to click away. That is permanently scripted. No time limit. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short? I used to write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story's about a ghost at all, Ramsey. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you only did glance it over, after all. But remember, the poets often express their own thoughts and feelings and experiences in their works. They usually do more than tell a simply simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is being symbolically compared to a ghost. <clears throat> Lingering... In her last remaining piece of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I haven't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Makes me have me think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I just keep trying. I'm counting on you. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. It's a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's, heavy. it's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sub. The music went off. I swear, I swear I heard it like a mistuning or something. I guess we're, that's where I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. I gingerly exchange sheets of paper and sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh. Um, did you say something? No, it's nothing. Natsuki just re sits, returns the poem and to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. 
Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I meant language, I guess. I was just trying to say something nice. Eh? So you mean you have to try out that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it didn't really come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked for someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it. And Ranzing did too. That name drop again from Monica. It's obvious she's off. She's doing something. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time you in my writing style. I didn't expect to change anytime soon, unless I come across to me. something particularly inspiring, which I haven't tried, haven't yet. Mm -hmm. Your answer could like my poem too, you know. He even told me that he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh, that's not what I, uh, ooh. Yeah, you just, Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Rin Rantic appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? And how do you know you didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that fool of my s yourself? No. If I was fool of myself, I would have deliberately gone away and make everything into a really cute seat. Uh, you, you know what? I'll go on this blue special blue size maker as soon as Rantic starts showing up. Natsuki? Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. Taking out your own insecurities on others like that? You really act as young as you look, Natsuki. Me? Look who's talking, you wannabe edgy bitch. Edgy? Sorry that my lifestyle is too much for something of your mental age to comprehend. See? Just saying that proves my point. Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate middle school, you know? If you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. If you think you can counterbalance your toxic personalities by dressing and acting cute? The only key thing about you is how hard you try. Whoa, be careful, you might cut yourself on the edge, Yuri. Oh, my bad, you already do, don't... D did you just accuse me of cutting myself? Ah, that's right! Her sleeves! From the previous playthrough! wrong with your head? Yeah, go on. Look, Ranzik, hear everything you really think. I'm sure he'll head out over your heels over this for you. Uh, suddenly Yuri turns towards me as she just knows I'm standing here. Ranzik! She's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. Dot, dot, dot. Wait, whoa. How do I get dragged into this? I have to choose. See. So this is where the darker sides of it. Wow, this is getting dark. This is the argument of choosing whose poem I should go with. I'm going to go with Natsu. Can't pick! Monica? Pick Monica. Wait. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Um. Hey, Ranzik. Why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay? Sorry about that, but they really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. Ah ha ha. Some president I am, right? Give me a minute, guys. I'm looking for, like, any kind of marking on her or something, in case there's some kind of weird stuff. There's nothing out of the ordinary. You keep controlling the game. Are you just the game itself? Oh my god. Some present I am, right? I can't even confront my own uh, club members properly. I just wish, wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes. But I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. 
You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'll be happy to spend time with you instead. Oh, you. You. Because it's a dating sim game, they want me. They're arguing over me. So why wouldn't somebody with powers give themselves the unfair advantage? Suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. Dot, dot, dot. She's in tears. She quickly runs away. Oh dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri is rocking back and forth in her desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri? I didn't mean it. I, I, I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Ranzik? Please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. The one, it's because Sayori was missing. And because Sayori was missing... Things were all out of whack, like some sort of... Dismembered time frame. Sayori is more important than we realized. Is that the point? Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget about all about it tomorrow. Completely. Stop that. Dot dot dot. Anyways, the meeting is over so you can go home now if you want. Dot dot dot. Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something, but she keeps glancing at Monica. You, you, you can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Well, I'm vice president, so... Please let me take that responsibility today. It sounds kind of like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It's not that. It's not that. I just... I just didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Ranzik. I, I, it would just be embarrassing with you listening. Sigh. I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing you trouble. What? 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 Waterfall? I'm gonna go for her again, cause I'm just... Something's not right! Kitty. Bubbles. Warm. Joy. Really? Your joy? Huh, okay. Kiss. Cheer. Comfort. Papa. Rose. Vanilla. Bunny. Candy. Boop. Skirt? Skirt. Pure. Melody. Twirl. day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Ranzik. Ah, hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Uh, um, Yuri glances over her shoulder looking around the room. Natsuki is reading manga at a desk, and surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me into the corner of the room. About yesterday, I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. Really? Tell me more! And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri, I'm happy that you were considerate and apologize. You don't have to worry too much. 
Even though I've only been here a couple days, I can only imagine something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems, but whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Ah, uh, Franzik, don't say those kind things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person, and I'm really glad you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around, and... Ah, uh, sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Ah, uh, no, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man... Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either? Dot dot dot. Yuri is clearly taken aback of how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. D no, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um, Natsuki, about yesterday, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So... Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Eh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. Wait a minute! This isn't her voice! It's something else! You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But, but, I'll accept your apology anyway if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear, since I was always afraid of you secretly hated me or something like that. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't hate you. Ahaha. <laughs> you're kind of weird, but you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey! Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I was not! <laughs> what took you so long anyways? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. And to be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. Ah, uh, that makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of de dedication. So I'm still impressed. Aw, well, thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. Aha, uh -huh, that's... Monica looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Ranzik. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah... I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyways. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose not to forget anything the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki has already run off into the closet. Vanzik? Um... Since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you'd like to spend time together today. I mean, in the club. Ah, I suppose so. I don't think I'd say no to you after you, you gave me that book. Uh, I guess I need to make sure Natsuki isn't waiting for me. I guess I need to make sure Natsuki isn't waiting for me. After we finished reading yesterday, she... She's fine. She's reading over there, see? Don't think about her so much. She's used to being a lord. Come on, we're going over there. What's the story about anyways? Well, mm, look at the cover of the book. The portrait of Mikrov. Obviously, the ice symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's a religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. And the people trapped there have this trade that turns them into killing machines that, that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse, and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyways, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? 
Yui made it sound like she was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. Ah, uh, you're not a fan of that sort of thing, Ranzik? No, not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kinds of things, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into these things. She's so sighed and with on the outside, but her mind seems completely different. It's just that this kind of story is the kind of story that challenges to look at life from a new, strange perspective. More horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyways. Then suddenly... I'm rambling, aren't I? Okay! Mild concern. I'm ending the episode here. I'll see you guys in the next episode, alright? Thank you so much for joining me. Hope to see you next time. Bye!